please tell me a little bit about yourself and your background in IoT. My name is Jairaj Nair. I head the IoT practice for Infosys, uh, which is a global systems integrator. We are about 190,000 people globally uh, uh, established systems integrator. I'm based here in California and have been working with the ecosystem locally. Now, can you describe, Jay Raj, what is the role of a system integrator in the Internet of Things? Oh, absolutely. In fact, uh, if you look at the various layers of a typical IoT stack, it's, uh, it's apt problem for a systems integration work. For example, um, you have the uh, technologies that are deployed at the edge. Mm -hmm. uh, as you go upstream through connectivity, you have device management, you have enterprise integration, and then analytics and visualization. You have to have somebody put these uh, things together, uh, together with uh, open systems of systems kind of architecture where interfaces are well defined, uh, loosely coupled at times, because there's no vert one vertically integrated solution that is out there deployed. So a systems integrator coming in can assess, understand uh, the problem statement, realize value, you know, focus on intrinsically the outcome. What is it that we are trying to optimize for? And then uh, select relevant technologies at these various layers and put them together. It is an integration job. Now, when does the system integrator typically get involved in a project? Uh, that's a good question. I frankly, there is no one answer for it, right? So there are uh, scenarios where we come in, uh, do uh, a design thinking workshop, uh, understand and define the problem, uh, define the variables in the environment that needs to be optimized for. What is the business value realization opportunity here, right? Go through that phase, uh, determine what the as is environment looks like, do architectural assessments, uh, look at what a potential, and then kind of look at technologies that can actually amplify uh, the people and the processes part, and then uh, go about making a transformation plan. You basically have the as is, you have the to be, and then there's a plan to uh, transform. That transformation plan is, uh, is one, uh, the engagement doesn't end with the creation of a transformation plan because you have to, the, the proof of the pudding is in actually implementing, deploying, and realizing value, right? So we sustain the journey with the customer, and we implement. We are, uh, uh, we, impl we design, engineer, implement, even in scenarios we even operate and provide services, uh, post-implementation services. So if you really look at uh, an example, let's look at one uh, in case of uh, a recent one that I'm personally involved in, which is an agricultural customer, uh, trying to optimize the yield and disease management capabilities in a farm, in a crop setting. In that case, all the way from figuring out what, so what sensors, what soil sensors, what type of environmental sensors, what type of drone technologies can be applied, assessing, figuring out what they are, uh, is one step. Uh, I think more importantly, how would the farmers adopt it? How would you deploy it? What would be the incentive for the farmer to adopt it? You know, what is the user experience? What is the empathy part of the uh, deployment process? Mm -hmm. uh, that is another aspect we get involved in. Then uh, when it comes to actually putting the IoT platform in place, uh, making it work through connectivity mechanisms to the edge, uh, that itself is a very, very uh, complex activity because you have to define the assets, define the devices, provision them, secure them, uh, and create data models, create asset models, create an ontology of the systems of systems. Uh, tie them back to your enterprise systems because the core of the, uh, what do you call the critical nomenclature and data resides in enterprise systems today. So interlink them, connect them, and then do the analytics and analytics and visualization of the outcome is not a one shot deal, right? It is an iterative process that you go through, you work with your customer like a partner, and then you figure out what is the variable that you're trying to optimize and what is the correlations that are possible. Contextualizing information today is such, a, such an iterative process. It is not something that you get done uh, in one shot. So we work through that process. And of course, uh, when a customer is uh, very close to you uh, and is truly a good partnership, uh, then we are actually engaged end to end over the various phases of uh, a project like this. And IoT is a transformative, uh, it is where cloud was a few years ago. So think about um, the innovators and the early adopters in the space today. Um, they are also trying out scenarios. So a more healthy, a more close uh, relationship with the customer is, uh, is critical to success. 
Now, you mentioned, uh, depending on the customer, you may go far. So you're saying, well, to what, what step do you go? I mean, the pilot, obviously, standing up a pilot, getting to the proof of concept, the pilot. Um, how far does a system integrator typically go? Uh, system integrators go all the way through the implementation phases, of course, and even post-implementation uh, provisioning so post support services uh, also are there. Okay. Uh, but if you look at the typical IoT projects in the last uh, 18 months that we have been involved in, uh, majority of them are have transitioned from the POC stages into production pilots, right? And the pilot sizes may vary. You may pick one asset or you may pick one production site or one class of assets. So if you take an asset efficiency solution, it may be applicable to a certain sector or a vertical or within a vertical at a certain plant or a location or a room or a facility, uh, you know, a, a chiller, for example. Or, you know, it may be of a larger scale where you're doing a factory level uh, energy management solution or you know an infrastructure like an airport or, or a larger facility like that um, or even in case of a farm small pilots to larger scale implementation so mm. so that that process of migration to a larger scale deployment is starting to happen uh, but it's a long journey i think uh, what you will see is uh, uh, the projects are reasonable size this year i think uh, in the subsequent years i expect them to grow larger and also I think these uh, the environments are all not all greenfield right they are brownfield environments they are uh, heterogeneous environments so you have to go in and uh, uh, work with the new technologies at the same time renewing some of the old technologies so it's a very interesting time to be in the space so we're in 2016 what would you say is the average size and what metric would you use to define the size of of these deployments um, I think uh, it varies, right? Depends on the sector. So we have been doing things in uh, multiple, you're doing projects in multiple sectors. Sure. So if you look at the industrial manufacturing, CPG kind of large asset sectors, uh, you know, the size can be, uh, if you just take our own campus, Infosys campus as an example, because it'll be more pertinent to use our examples here. Uh, there the campus is, again, uh, 250 acre campus, uh, uh, 16,000 plus residents, uh, hundreds of buildings. Uh, so the scale of implementation of IoT technologies can be at that level. But what are you instrumenting uh, in that situation? Uh, everything from uh, data acquisition systems, uh, sensors which collect information about the operating environment of such, this is a smart city example I'm using yes. about energy management. Yeah. So understanding uh, uh, ambient temperatures, uh, capacities, uh, figuring out um, uh, water usage, uh, figuring out uh, energy levels of uh, effective managing management of energy mm. at a room level, at a floor level, at a building level, uh, making the environment compatible for people living in them. But I just want to get a, an idea of scalar. We're talking 100 nodes, 1,000 end nodes, 10,000 end nodes. So it, it in, in, in this example, it's in the thousands in of the nodes, thousands. Okay. right? No, that's helpful. But in the other examples, you could, for example, you take a small asset. It's again a system of system sure. scenario. If you sure. take a small asset like a landing gear, so the number of sensors in that scenario is about 32 or so that uh, our engineering services guys have instrumented. Mm -hmm. Um, so that sounds like a small number, but the material impact on the mission criticality of Absolutely. those sensors and the data that it provides is much more significant. Okay. So can you give our audience a little bit of advice for what they should do to prepare? What should they do before engaging with a system integrator? Right. Um, that's a very good question. In fact, very timely too. I just had a call with another uh, potential customer this morning and uh, we were going through the same exercise. I think uh, realizing value uh, it is value. Where, where it starts, right? So figuring out what is it that you're trying to realize as an outcome is step one. So I think the CFO, the business unit head, the company head, the CEO of a company, uh, they sit down and they have to figure out what is it that we, they want to get out of it. It's not just a technology play. It definitely has to materially impact. Uh, it can't be uh, the, just a technology play. No, absolutely. It has to materially impact their uh, operations efficiency or you know, improve the quality of life or... Uh, somewhere in the uh, Somewhere, Yeah, exactly. So uh, that is the starting point. So they, if, if, a, if a customer is prepared or has a reasonable understanding of their as-is environment, that is often a challenge. In fact, you know, when you go in into many of these conversations, what you find out is uh, 
the as is architecture is not very well documented it is scattered frankly knowledge management in every company is a big challenge right so understanding what you got and what you can measure and what is the value of optimizing a certain variable in a certain mm. way mm. Uh, is step one okay. i think getting getting that squared away leads to um, a, a kind of realization of what it could be and what the to be ought to be and then uh, you create a transformation plan so okay. so we help our customers by going through specific design thinking sessions to nail down the problem statements because most often you start with one and you end up some, somewhere else there's always a pivot uh, yeah th that pivot actually can be very truly transformative and uh, may impact uh, and provide a better value for uh, uh, for our customers so you identify the value first, and then I'm assuming you build a business plan around it. Yeah, absolutely. I think the rationale is uh, there should be good return on investment for the customer. It should be, um, it should be, uh, and and proving out that value can be done in many stages. Uh, that is that is where they start. You know, uh, create a business plan around what is it that outcome that you want to realize. And many customers uh, today, uh, intrinsically, the ones that are operating under a lot of uh, pressure in terms of uh, margin pressures or revenue pressures, um, they can actually see opportunities for optimizing, especially in the asset efficiency uh, zone. You mm. can suddenly find out that now that you can sense and detect uh, what is going on in the environment so effectively, you can find a lot of low-hanging fruit. Um, I think uh, monitoring and simple visibility what you measure is what you manage is the is the old uh, adage right, right? Uh, so i think now that you can see all this information and then frankly really important information is also very very much uh, relevant here i mean not every information piece may be relevant uh, figuring out what is good and valuable information and then processing it and converting them into some sort of an intelligence uh, will add value uh, again as i as i mentioned those are the first two steps and then you kind of go about engineering the solution Right, build your requirements document and then yeah. work with work with your Yeah, partner. I think the, the classic uh, change shift that we are seeing is it's not that the waterfall requirements management comes upstream and then you go down. No. Requirements are constantly evolving Absolutely. like the solution is, right? Absolutely. So you iterate and uh, do it in an agile way. In front way. of the customers, right? And get yeah. from the users and have yeah. them use it at every step. And most often it's not like we lock down, uh, lock down a particular uh, contract and it is like bound in certain manner. It there has is, to have there some is flexibility. There is an agility and flexibility baked into it. Which because is good in the advice. IoT space it has to be. Otherwise, uh, you reach uh, dead ends very fast. No, that's a good advice for when engaging with a system integrator yeah. to give yourself structure a yourself of, uh, with some flexibility. With some flexibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so our audience now, they realize that they need a system integrator. What's your advice for the criteria for choosing a system integrator? Work with us. Uh, that's a very simple answer, that. right? Uh, work with us. Uh, after that. After, okay, so I think this, um, there's a basic, uh, if you talk to many of the uh, sourcing companies, um, they will have a list of very detailed criteria to go through. Mine is very simple, I think in the IoT landscape, uh, you got to have some degree of domain expertise. Um, the thing, uh, knowledge, is very valuable. Uh, then IT and OT can come together. Mm. Uh, I think uh, the uh, trust part is also very important uh, mm. in this space, like any other space, because uh, be it journey. is truly a journey, transformative journey, yeah. and the amount of uh, iterations that you would go through in defining the problem and solving the problem would be much larger. It's not an established solution. It's uh, something that you work through in creating. Uh, so trust is another part and uh, technically if I look at the five layers of the IoT stack, mm. I mean from the knowledge of the sensors to knowledge of the uh, loggers and aggregators of information, understanding of mesh networks and topologies, connectivity part, uh, your IoT platforms, there are a dime a dozen platforms, some are really good, some are evolving. So there is a wash up uh, expected in the IoT platform mm. space. I agree. So bringing all of, uh, figuring out uh, which one is the apt one for you and is sustainable. Uh, you know, trust is very important in, sure. in that part. So you want to pick an SI who knows about these five layers and has been uh, investing and spending time uh, with reference solutions. And, uh, you know, another comment I'll make is that IoT is an ecosystem play. Right. It has always been an ecosystem play because there's no be. one, it has to be. You got these layers and you have multiple partners and players, perf you know, providing input in every layer input, technology, capabilities. Uh, what I would uh, recommend is uh, pick someone who works very well with the ecosystem. 
um, you know, first of all, somebody who will partner up with trust and work upstream with you and downstream with you. And also somebody who's got a very, uh, what do you call the true agnostic mm. nature mm. of a systems integrator. Mm. Mm. Somebody who looks out for you as a customer. Great uh, advice. Pick them. Um, Jay Raj, where can people, where can our viewers find out more about you, your company, where should they go? Infosys.com. Uh, go to experienceinfosys.com. Uh, inf experienceinfosys.com. Um, we, IoT as a practice is incubated within the engineering services team. Okay. Engineering is one of our core competencies. Uh, we have a very large engineering services practice. I think uh, you can start looking at us from reaching out to Infosys, but you can also reach out to me as an individual um, and reach out to Infosys.com and we'll, we'll definitely come in and provide you with the answers you need. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, thank you.